The Terps need to add Rodney Rice this offseason. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your team. Day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Maryland basketball needs to add former Virginia Tech guard Rodney Rice this offseason. Maryland basketball could get bad next year. I wanted to touch on this a little bit today in the first segment. We could get bad next year fast. This roster could get depleted, and it's already kind of broken, and it could get a lot worse than what it is now. The plan is gone. The way that we plan things out for the next couple of years It's kind of all in question right now just based off of how things are going this year. Kevin Willard wouldn't tell you that, but I'm telling you that the plan that they had set up for the next couple years is definitely messy. For one, we lose Jameer Young, who has completely saved this season, who has been the only thing that has been a consistency at all for the Maryland Terrapin. He's been our best player by far. He may have been the best guard this year in the Big Ten, even though the season's not over yet. He's that type of player. He's playing like an All-American type of player. He's averaging 21 points, almost just under 21 points, 4.1 assists, and 4.1 rebounds. But that was part of the plan. We knew that Jameer Young would be gone after this year. We knew that... This was his last year when he decided to come back. We knew that this was the last time we would be able to have him, a talented player like Jameer Young. But one thing we did not know, one thing that we thought would change, one thing that we thought would be better, and we thought that we would have set up better, I think, for Jameer Young's absence was the freshman this year, specifically Deshaun Harris-Smith. I think they expected Deshaun Harris-Smith to be able to take the reins of this team, take the reins of being the starting, like, guy at the point guard position for Jameer Young. And Deshaun Harris-Smith has shown flashes at times of being a solid player right now and being able to do some good things, and he showed some heart and some hustle at different points in the year. But by no means would I say he's ready to take – on being our lead guard next year in terms of not of him being like a point guard. Like I think he can do that, but in terms of him being maybe our number one option next year, because that's what I think the plan was. The plan was, okay, give Deshaun Harris-Smith a year to adjust. He's going to show us a lot. He's going to show us a lot of different things. Remember, it was, it kind of reminded me of when Anthony Cowan and Melo Trimble played together. It was like, Okay, Mellow Trimble, he, he, he's getting older now. Anthony Cowan brought in this really talented guy. He showed a lot of flashes. Maybe there was some weaknesses to his game, like his shooting ability overall and whatnot and different things like that. But when we knew that when Mellow was gone, we knew that Anthony Cowan was going to be able to take over this team and still have a guy that can get, what, like 16, 17 points per game at the guard position. But I'm not seeing that overall with Deshaun Harris-Smith. Unless some drastic change happens in the offseason in terms of his shooting overall, right now the plan is kind of messed up in terms of that. We also lose Dante Scott. And then the other freshmen, too, haven't looked good enough for me to say these guys are going to be a starter next year. Like Jamie Kaiser was definitely supposed to come off the bench this year, maybe potentially start by the end of this year and be an impact player. He hasn't scored in a, a in like three, four games. Jamie Kaiser hasn't scored in this year. He had a really good stretch of games where he dropped like six and seven, but he hasn't scored in a while now. So overall, I think we expected Jamie Kaiser to be a guy that could potentially get maybe 
11 points per game next year, maybe 10 points a game next year. But overall, those guys aren't there yet. So I look at this and I say that the plan is kind of messed up. I think they expected Jonathan Lamothe to be able to maybe do some things next year coming off the bench overall. Um, I'm not overall sure exactly, but you can't tell me they didn't expect Deshaun Harris-Smith to take the reins from Jameer Young and then Jamie Kaiser to become a really one of the better freshmen in the Big Ten and be able to average maybe 11, 12 points per game next year, look like that type of guy for the Maryland Terrapins. But those guys don't look like that. And we lose Dante Scott. We lose Jameer Young. And we could lose a lot more through the portal. I would not be surprised at all if Julian Reese is gone next year. Would not be surprised. I'd be willing to say that Julian Reese leaves. I have no nothing behind it that backs it up, but I just have a feeling that there's a strong chance Julian Reese transfers after this year. Jahari Long is back. Jahari Long might be our best player best guard coming back overall. I, I argue that he should start over Deshaun Harris Smith next year. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, this roster could definitely be depleted. If, if Jameer Young's gone, Dante Scott's gone and Julian Reese is potentially gone. And we're relying on these freshmen that don't have much shown this year. I think you have to be able to get a guy like Rodney Rice. And I'm sure a lot of you guys don't actually know who Rodney Rice is. Rodney Rice was part of the Virginia Tech team, very talented player, but he is no longer part of the program anymore. I don't know exactly what happened with that situation. I guess it just didn't fit overall. I mean, I don't think that's crazy for me to assume that. It just didn't fit for him at Virginia Tech, and he'll probably and he'll go play somewhere else overall. But the thing about Rodney Rice and the reason he's being connect to, connected to Maryland is because he was recruited from Maryland when he came out of Dematha. He's been a Maryland recruit for a while now, and he went to Dematha, same school as Jameer Young, right outside of Maryland. He's from the Maryland area. I'm not sure exactly where he lives, but he, he lives. I would think reasonably close to the University of Maryland within 30, 40 minutes, at least, if not closer. And he also was coached by our assistant coach, Mike Jones, was his head coach at DeMatha for his senior year. So overall, this Rodney Rice thing makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. I think he can come in and really play right away for us. I, I've seen him play many times in person, like, Rodney Rice is legit. I thought he was going to be a very good college player. I didn't think he was the type of guy to like be a one or done or like anything like that. I, that's not what I thought. I thought he had a chance to be a very solid like four year guy that you're looking at him as a fourth year guy and you're like, oh, this guy's like, and he was at Virginia Tech, so I guess you'd be like, this guy second team all ACC, first team all ACC type of, like type of player by his senior year as he kept going, as his confidence kept growing. I could, I really could see that from Rodney Rice because his game is complete. I don't see a weakness in his game. Like when I watched him live, elite shooter. That's one thing for sure. He's an elite shooter. He's all around game, no weakness. And he was a top 100 recruit for a reason. A lot of people outside of Maryland and Virginia Tech wanted Rodney Rice overall. So I think next year when I'm looking at the makeup of our team, I'm thinking we need a guy like this to be able to slide into the starting lineup and potentially start. This this team is going to need a, a big overhaul. We're going to have to use the portal a lot to get back to potentially having, I don't know, like a tournament team. I don't know. Like right now, next year, it just looks like it, there's no shot at that. And then this year right now, it looks like there's no shot at that. So to figure out how to get back into the mix of things, you probably have to land Derek Queen as well. So – there's definitely different steps that you have to take. But one thing's for sure, Rodney Rice has to be Maryland Terrapin. And it seems like things are I, – if I would predict where he's going, I definitely could see him going to Maryland just because of the connection with Mike Jones. It makes a lot of sense overall for him to come. His time at Virginia Tech, he only averaged – he averaged 7.4 points per game, but he was young, and he shot 33.3% from the three-point line. But I do think he could be a starting point guard next year. Deshaun Harris-Smith could play the two, I guess, and 
Deshaun would have to improve a lot. And I guess you would look at Kaiser as your three next year. I don't know exactly. That's kind of getting way ahead. But I do think the Terps need to land Rodney Rice next year before this thing gets ugly fast for the Maryland Terrapins overall. Maryland basketball, biggest problem. What is it? I will get into that after this ad from FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy, easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find the bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. Find the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. The Maryland basketball's biggest problem is consistency, and it is hurting us a ton. Outside of Jameer Young, there is absolutely zero consistency in this program at all. No consistency. Run through the board everywhere from Kevin Willard to anyone on this team, basically. There is not consistency. Anyone that plays. I'm not going to talk about the guys that don't play because I don't know what they're doing in practice. I don't know what they're doing to help scout. I don't know all of that. But the guys that play, the guys that coach, there is no consistency from coaching to offense to defense to game plan, rotation, anything. There is no consistency with the Maryland program at all. The only thing consistent with our program is that we are consistent being inconsistent. If you really start looking at the stats, nobody is able to continue from game to game to put up similar numbers or we know what we're going to get out of guys. And I think that's important in basketball. A lot of it is just knowing what you're going to get out of guys, guys being able to play their role. You know, this guy's going to probably give you about 20 a night. You know, that guy, okay, he'll probably give you five. You know, that guy will probably give you about 10, but the Maryland team, you don't know what a lot of these guys will give you. And I mean, it starts with Julian Reese. He's the number one target for this drop zero versus Purdue. Had 20 against Illinois. Had 10 against Michigan State. Had one against UCLA. You never know what Julian Reese is going to give you this season. I think last year he was better than he was this year, but you never know what Julian Reese is going to get you. And right now, he's pretty much our second option. He hasn't quite played like it, I would say. It's between probably him and Dante Scott, but Julian Reese is probably our second option. And you need your second option to be able to be somewhat give you a performance that you somewhat can expect, a performance that is somewhat consistent in in these Big Ten games and these out in any games in college basketball for any team. When you think about the best teams in college basketball, their second options are elite and would be first options for a lot of teams. And I'm not saying that Maryland has to be quite that, but Julian Reese could definitely be a first op- He's talented enough to be a first option for some teams. He has to just be more consistent, be aggressive all the time, improve from the free throw line. There's just different things that he's just been very inconsistent about. I think free throws is one. Foul trouble, staying out of foul trouble is another. Very inconsistent with all those type of things. And, and it's okay to have a bad game. But it can't be like, oh, you had 20 here. Oh, you had 10 there. Oh, you had zero against Purdue. Oh, you had one against UCLA. That can't happen at all. Jordan Geronimo, very inconsistent. I'm mainly talking about the offensive side of the ball, but you can go through pretty much everything. Inconsistent overall. Offensively, Jordan Geronimo is somewhat limited. His three-point shot does look kind of clean at times, when he shoots it overall, but Jordan Geronimo has definitely been inconsistent for Maryland basketball offensively. I don't know whether he's going to put up zero or he's going to put up like nine or ten. You don't know with this guy, and it seems like there's no in-between. Zero points against Michigan State and three rebounds. Twelve points against Northwestern with seven rebounds. 
Nine points against Illinois. Oh, zero against Michigan. Zero against Minnesota. This is a starter, a guy that plays above 26, 27 minutes, usually per game, is in there a lot. And we don't know if he's going to drop zero. We don't know if he's going to drop seven. We don't know if he's going to drop eight. We don't know if he's going to be a second-leaning score, make a couple threes. We have no idea. And I think that's what we don't have. We don't have very much identity. We don't have very – we have roles, but we don't have roles, if you know what I mean. Like, you, they could probably go around and say what their role is overall, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to impact this team, but the roles aren't – Things that happen consistently, back to the theme of consistency. Like, outside of Jameer Young, like, what's Jordan Geronimo's role? To play hard, to play defense over, and he is not supposed to give us a ton, ton of scoring overall. That's probably his role. What's Julian Reese's role? He probably has to get us 15 and 10, protect the rim overall, but he hasn't done that consistently. What's Dante Scott's role? Dante Scott probably needs to be our third option. Be a shooter. He's improved that a ton. And I'll give Dante Scott a lot of credit. He's improved his consist- consistency a ton. Over the last couple of games, he's done some really good things. 16 against Michigan State. Five rebounds. Two blocks. 11 against Northwestern. 22 against against the game before that. Like Dante Scott has been very consistent overall. And then we look at the freshman very inconsistent. Jamie Kaiser had a really solid stretch where I thought he took the next step where he had six against Michigan to help us win that and seven against Minnesota. Doesn't sound like a lot for him, but he's an off-the-bench freshman type of player, a guy that doesn't play a ton, but a guy that we think can be a potential really good player. And he, I thought, found his rhythm. I thought he found a shot. He was doing some really good things overall. He was playing at the end of the game. It looked like he should be playing instead of Jordan Geronimo at that three spot and then move Dante Scott down to the four. It looked like that for a little bit for Jamie Kaiser. It just looked like he gave us more offensive ability. It looked like he was able to stretch the floor a little bit more. It just looked like we were able to do a little bit more. It looked like we were going to be able to just have more offensive flexibility with Jamie Kaiser. But over the last three games, he hasn't scored. So we're looking at this team, and I don't even want to talk about Deshaun Harris-Smith because I feel like I've talked about him too much. He's definitely been inconsistent. And then we're looking at the team and we're saying, like, then what do we expect? If no one is going to be consistent outside of one player, if no one's going to show up every single day and – know what they're going to do and be able to do that and be able to play their role and be able to score and be able to do different things like that, we're not going to be a very good team. That's just what it is overall. So I think the Terps need to find consistency next year. I think they got to find players that are able to perform at a level that you can drop 10 consistently and the big thing I'm talking about is scoring offensively. I think that's the thing that's hurting us the most. I just want to see more consistency out of this team. I think it's also Kevin Willard. He's had good coaching games against Illinois. I think that was one of his best coaching jobs so far here at Maryland. And then he's had absolute stinkers of games early on in the season. And even over these past couple of games, we've blown leads. We're If you just talk about first, half versus second half we look like two completely different teams a lot of the time just take that michigan state game we're down huge in the first half take the michigan game we're down huge in the first half in the second half we look like completely different teams if we play throughout the game we don't have to play great against michigan state throughout the game but we can't go down by double digits in the first half if we keep it within seven six points or we just keep it we just keep it somewhat respectable. Then you look at this team and they're in a different spot. One possession game, we don't win because we're not, we don't have consistency around Jameer Young, guys that can make buckets like game. There's no consistency with this program, and that's what's hurting us, I think, probably the most right now. A lot of things are hurting us, but I think that's our biggest problem right now. How are the Terps in the NFL performing? I will tell you about that 
right now. The Terps in the NFL finished up the year pretty big, and I just want to go through a couple of guys that did a couple of big things this year, starting with Deontay Banks. Looked very the part of the first rounder for the Giants. He could have been you. I think people had him like kind of in the defensive rookie of the year conversation for a little bit. I mean, not for like he's not going to win it, but he I think definitely was like kind of in the conversation. He definitely was worth the first round pick overall. Deontay Banks lived up to it, and I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if he was going to just seeing him play every game at Maryland. I knew he was really talented, but I didn't know how well the technique would go over. I didn't know. I wasn't. I was unsure. But Deontay Banks looked very the part of that being that first rounder, which is a great look for the Maryland program. And I think it has helped us in recruiting some. But he had 11, he had 11 pass deflections and two interceptions. Next, DJ Moore did his thing. Absolutely, the former Terp wide receiver was elite for the Chicago Bears. Locked himself up clearly as the number one wide receiver. I think there were some questions going into it, like, was he, is he a number one wide receiver? Like, he definitely is. DJ Moore looked very solid for the Maryland Terrapins. 96 receptions, 1,364 yards. Stefan Diggs, he's still a great player, but he started to definitely disappoint. I'm sure a lot of you guys watched the playoffs, but three receptions, 21 yards against the Chiefs in his last game of the year. Dropped a huge pass at the end of the gay game excuse me, um, to help the Bills potentially win the game in that spot, and he drops a huge pass. Last year, a lot of the blame was on Josh Allen, and it seemed like Stephon Diggs was mad at Josh Allen, but now it looks like the blame could be on Stephon Diggs. Obviously, the kicker missed the kick, but before that, Diggs missed the big pass, but we still love Stephon Diggs. He still had 1,000 yards receiving on the year. Still big-time talent, but trouble could be brewing for Stephon Diggs in the offseason. Ty Johnson, the former Maryland running back, was on the Bills with Stephon Diggs, came onto the scene in the playoffs for the Bills, had 40 yards rushing against the Chiefs, did some really good things. Coach Loxley tweeted out about how he remembered when he recruited him and everything and how hard he worked, and now he's living his dream and it's paying off and everything, which I thought was pretty cool. And then Darnell Savage, Big pick against the Cowboys, which was huge to help the Packers get um, to the next round to play the 49ers. Obviously, we know what happened in that game. Definitely a game they could have won, but Darnell Savage had definitely a solid postseason as well. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.